The Science Success Center, with funding from Title V, presents Animal Structure and Function, a biology workshop. Hi, I'm Steve. In biology, there are various levels of organization beginning with the smallest units and ending with the sum of all the units. Within the animal body, the smallest unit is found at the cellular level, the cell itself, which is a basic unit of life. The next level of organization is the tissue level, a network of cells working together to perform a common function. The organ level, then, is a series of tissues grouped together to perform a specific task. The organ system level is comprised of various organs that perform a vital body function. The final level, which is the organism level, contains a number of organ systems all coordinated to work as a unit. The body plan of an organism reflects their environment and habitat along with millions of years of evolution. Here we see a penguin, shark, and a seal, all of whom share a similar body plan and habitat, yet are very distantly related species. The first type of tissue we will discuss is epithelial tissue, which is composed of sheets of cells that cover body surfaces and line internal organs. Diagram 2 shows examples of different epithelium. Simple squamous epithelium is thin, allowing diffusion to take part. We find it lining our capillaries, which are the smallest blood vessels and the air sacs of our lungs. Simple cuboidal epithelium have cells with a relatively large amount of cytoplasm, making it possible for secretion or absorption of material. Part B shows a simple cuboidal epithelium forming a tube in the kidney. We also find this type of tissue in our glands. Simple columnar epithelium lines the intestines. It secretes digestive juices and absorbs nutrients. Pseudostratified ciliated columnar epithelium forms a mucous membrane that lines the respiratory tract, trapping dust, pollen, and other particles in our air tubes. Stratified squamous epithelium contains many layers, making it suitable for lining surfaces subject to abrasion such as the outer skin and the esophagus, which can be abraded by rough foods. Connected tissue binds and supports other tissues. There are six major types of connected tissues that are shown illustrated in diagram three. Loose connected tissue is the most common connected tissue found in the human body. Its matrix is a loose weave of fiber. Many of the fibers consist of the strong rope-like protein collagen. Here we see loose connected tissue binding skin to muscles. Fibrous connected tissue forms tendons, which attach muscles to bone and ligaments, which join bones together. Adipose tissue stores fat in large, closely packed adipose cells. This tissue pads and insulates the body and stores energy. Cartilage commonly surrounds the end of bones, where it forms a shock absorbing surface. Also supports the nose and ear and forms a cushioning disc between our vertebrae. Bone has a matrix of collagen fibers embedded in a hard mineral substance made of calcium, magnesium, and phosphate. Lastly, blood consists of red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets which are suspended in plasma. It functions mainly in transporting substance from one part of the body to another and also in immunity. Muscle tissue consists of bundles of long cells called muscle. Vertebrates have three types of muscle tissue, illustrated in diagram 4. The first type, which is skeletal muscle, is attached to bones by tendons and is responsible for voluntary movements of the body. The second type, which is cardiac muscle, forms the contractile tissue of the heart. Lastly, smooth muscle is found in the walls of the digestive tract, urinary bladder, arteries, and other internal organs. It is responsible for involuntary body activities such as the movement of food through the intestines. Nervous tissue senses stimuli and rapidly transmits information from one part of an animal to another. The structural and functional unit of nervous tissue is the nerve cell, or neuron, which is uniquely specialized to conduct electrical nerve impulses. In all but the simplest animals, Tissues are arranged into organs that perform specific functions. The heart, for example, while mostly muscle, also has epithelial, connective, and nervous tissues. Figures 2 and 3 illustrate the tissue components of the stomach and intestine. 
Notice that each organ is composed of various tissues that work together as a group to perform the organ's function. Scientists are increasingly turning to bioengineering in their search for ways to repair or replace damaged tissues and organs. One of the most successful tissue engineering advances has come in the form of artificial, a type of human engineered tissue designed for everyone from burn victims to diabetic patients with skin ulcers. Figure 4 shows the bioengineering of a laboratory grown bladder. Figure 5 shows the construction of an ear within a petri dish. Now we will move on to the various organ systems. The endocrine system secretes chemicals called hormones that regulate body activities and therefore consists of all the glands. The skeletal system supports the body, protects certain internal organs such as the brain and lungs, and provides the framework for muscles to produce movement. The circulatory system is responsible for transporting nutrients and oxygen to body cells. Where does the oxygen come from? Well, the environment, of course. Therefore, the respiratory system is responsible for supplying the body with oxygen. It also functions in disposing carbon dioxide. The muscular system consists of all the skeletal muscles and functions in producing movement, maintaining posture, and producing heat. The integumentary system, which is our hair, nails, and skin, protects us against mechanical injury, infection, excessive heat or cold, and drying out. The lymphatic system returns excess body fluid to the circulatory system and functions as part of the immune system. The immune system defends the body against infections and cancer. The urinary system, sometimes called the excretory system, removes nitrogen-containing waste products from the blood and regulates the chemical makeup, pH, and water balance of the blood. The digestive system ingests and breaks down food, absorbs nutrients, and eliminates undigested material. The reproductive system produces gametes and sex hormones. The female system provides organs to support a developing embryo and glands for producing milk. The nervous system coordinates body activities by detecting stimuli, integrating information, and directing the body's responses. Now, we will observe the image technology shown in Figure 12. Computer tomography scan, also known as a CT scan, produces images of a series of thin cross-sections through the body. Positron emission tomography scan, also known as a PET scan, is an imaging technology that differs from a CT scan in that it has the ability to yield information about metabolic processes at a specific location in the body. A PET scanner pinpoints metabolic hotspots by highlighting the sites of most intense radiation with a radioactive isotope. The last image is a combination of both the CT scan and the PET scan. Here, the arrows point at the bone cancer shown in the images. There are various homeostatic mechanisms that help regulate the internal environment of an animal. Every animal wants to remain in homeostasis, basically remain in equilibrium. Conditions may fluctuate widely in an animal's external environment, hence the white arrows which represents the fluctuations. However, homeostatic mechanisms regulate internal conditions resulting in much smaller fluctuations in the animal's internal environment. The white-tailed ptarmigan prefers short fluctuated arrows versus wide. We will now explain how homeostasis depends on negative feedback. When your body senses a rise in temperature above the set point, it activates cooling mechanisms such as the dilation of blood vessels to allow heat to escape and the cooling of the body through secreted sweat glands. Once body temperature returns to normal, your body shuts off these cooling mechanisms. When body temperature falls below the set point, warming mechanisms activate, such as constriction of blood vessels to reduce heat loss and shivering to generate heat. Again, a return to normal temperature shuts off these mechanisms. Thank you everyone for watching. Come visit us at the SSC if you have any questions. Good luck in all your studies and tune in for the next workshop.